Hello, welcome back. So far in our study, we have limited our discussion to discrete sources and discrete channel. Now, we will address the issue of defining information measure for sources which generates continuous data or analog data. The motivation for this is basically to arrive at the Shannon's important theorem which relates the channel capacity to the engineering parameters like bandwidth and signal to noise ratio. So, let us look at a source which generates continuous data and we will model it as follows. The output of the source would be treated as a continuous random variable x. So, this continuous random variable can be viewed as a limiting form of a discrete random variable that assumes the value x n equal to n times delta x, where n is equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 up to plus minus infinity and delta x approaches 0. Correct? And with this ra continuous random variable, we have what is probability density function associated with it. We call it in short PDF. So, this PDF would be given by this function shown here. For sake of simplicity, many a times we will write this as just f x, we will strip it off the random variable x from here, okay. just to make the writing the expressions little easier. Now, without loss of generality, let us assume that this random variable domain is from minus infinity to plus infinity. And since we are considering it as a limiting form of a discrete random variable, what it means basically it is divided into small intervals of size delta x. So, if you take any particular interval out here, this is n delta x and let me call this is n plus 1 delta x. Correct? Now, by definition, the random variable x assumes a value in this interval which is your x n x n plus delta x. So, the probability of random variable x lying in this interval would be given by f times n delta x multiplied by delta x approximately. As delta x tends to 0, this approximation becomes better. Okay? So, now let us try to extend the definition of entropy for a discrete messages or discrete random variable to this continuous random variable but we will again view it as a limiting form of a discrete random variable. In that case, I will be able to write my entropy 
as this is the probability correct of that interval and then log to the base 2 of 1 by correct. So, permitting delta x tends to 0 the ordinary entropy of the continuous random variable x takes this limiting form. Okay. So, this we can simplify as n times this is sorry this is n times delta x delta x log to the base 2 So, what I have done here basically this expression I have broken up into two parts. Okay. So, this is what I get from here. Okay. So, now if we take the limiting case where delta x tends to 0, what I would get is h x is equal to So, this comes from the first term here, okay. this, this is basically from the first term and the second term is rewritten as follows. So, this I can again re rewrite as because f x is a PDF. So, the integral here is equal to 1. So, I get this quantity. Now, look at this quantity. If you look at this quantity including the minus sign, this will tend to infinity as delta x tends to 0. Now, intuitively this is expected. So, what will happen basically when delta x tends to 0, this tends to infinity. So, this right side basically will tend to infinity. And, uh, the reason basically is obviously because there are infinite number of values between say minus infinity plus infinity or between any particular range. So, the uncertainty is very high of getting a particular value correct. The probability of getting a particular value is almost 0 correct. So, if you look from that point of view the uncertainty becomes infinity uh, and the entropy should be equal to infinite. Okay. So, now this is infinite I cannot define this to avoid this problem associated with the term log 2 delta x we basically define this quantity as what is known as differential entropy and this term basically serves as a reference correct. Uh, this is actually acceptable because remember that for information transmission, we are actually interested in the difference between the entropy terms that have a common reference correct. So, the if they have a common reference, the difference of that information of the difference 
between the corresponding differential entropy terms will be still finite correct if the reference is same therefore it is perfectly justified for me to define this term as information major it's a differential relative major for a continuous source absolute entropy obviously is infinite for a continuous source intuitively it is fine okay so let me take one example to help you appreciate this so let's assume that we have a random variable x which is uniformly distributed between the range minus 1 to say plus 1 correct and this signal is passed through an amplifier of gain say 4 and output i get basically another random variable which is y now obviously from here we can find out the pdf of x that would be equal to what it's a uniform random variable so this will be equal to half for x less than equal to 1 or is equal to 0 otherwise and the pdf for random variable y would be given as so now the range will be minus 4 to plus 4 again it will be a uniform distribution correct uniform pdf so and this would be equal to 0 otherwise correct so now let's try to calculate the differential entropies for this so by definition this would be equal to min plus uh, minus 1 your fx is half so log to base 2 1 by fx so this will be equal to 2 dx and this will turn out to be 1 bit correct and if you take the differential entropy of the random variable y this would be equal to this expression right and this would be equal to 3 bits correct so you get a difference of 2 bits correct but it's important to realize that in this case what is the reference for random variable x for random variable x the reference is minus log to the base 2 delta x correct and for y the reference is minus log to the base 2 delta y now if you take the difference between these two references i get it as minus log and if you take this in the limiting case where both delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0 what i'll get it is equal to dy by dx correct so log of this correct so this basically it's so limiting case of this would be equal to this so actually this is limiting case i should have written this delta y delta x this is equal to log to the base 2 of dy by dx correct and this is equal to log 2 this is four times so this four so this is equal to 2 so what i get basically that this x and y have obviously because there's no gain in the information it is just amplified the signal is amplified so i don't gain any information as such so from the absolute entropies for both x and y should be the same 
correct and therefore you see that there is the there is a difference between the differential relative entropies because of the difference in the references okay so so but if the references are same then when you take the difference it will be nullified okay fine now having defined the differential entropy the next question is that this definition let's define it again so okay so taking this as your definition for differential entropy now we have seen for a discrete sources that the maximum entropy turns out to be when your probability distribution function for the output is uniform correct so is it possible for us to find out a distribution a pdf for a continuous case such that this becomes maximum correct so now my problem is basically i want to find out the maximum differential entropy but i'll have to put some constraint on x correct so i could say okay fine given maximum value of x what would be the maximum differential entropy correct i could solve that problem but for this class what we'll consider is basically what is of interest to me is basically if i give you the variance of this random variable to be a constant and take that as a constraint then for that constraint can you find out the pdf which will maximize this hx okay so my problem is as follows i want to maximize hx correct but since fx is a pdf there will be some constraint on that and i also specify the constraint that the variance of my input signal is fix okay so this is a constraint optimization problem my problem is to determine pdf of a random variable x such that differential entropy is maximized for some prescribed variance so i specify this variance okay so let's try to solve this so this is my problem and the constraints are given like this the first constraint is on the pdf property it should be 1 and the this constraint has been specified by me that the variance so this should be the variance of my pdf is a constant mu is the mean value of the random variable x right and for convenience basically we'll try to represent this fxx by just fx okay okay so the solution to this basically is provided from the calculus of variation and what does the the theorem from the calculus of variation say is this given this integral i of this form this is a function of some variable x and it's also function of another function f which could be function of x correct i want to maximize this subject to the following constraints so there are different functions have been given up to phi 1 phi 2 phi k and all those functions basically satisfy this constraint where your lambdas are basically constant correct now without going into the proof for this the the solution to this problem optimization problem with the constraint is provided here so the form of fx that maximizes this i is found from the solution of this equation correct 
So, you take the partial derivative of capital F with respect to small f and then phi's these are phi 1, phi 2 up to phi k and your alpha i's are constant for i equal to 1 to k. Okay? So, in our case we want to optimize the differential entropy. So, our function capital F f x this is equal to f x log to the base 2 1 by f x and your phi 1 x f is equal to f x and your phi 2 s x f is equal to x minus mu squared f x. Okay? Fine. So, we have mapped our given function to this capital F right? and then we will use the procedure specified here to find the solution for this. Okay? So, let us do it quickly. So, first thing is to take the derivative of this And when we take the derivative of this with f x and then we will have to take the derivative of this also with f x and after taking the derivatives we will have to multiply by the constants alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, it is simple to see that if I do this basically what I am going to get here is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x minus mu squared. x minus mu bracket squared sorry. Okay. This is equal to 0. Okay. So, now this will imply as derivative of we will just change this to the log form natural log So, for the sake of simplicity I am just writing instead of writing f x I am just writing it f here it will simplify our expressions. Okay. So, this will imply that f x is equal to exponential simple as you take the derivative you will get this expression. Okay. So, this implies that my f x is equal to e raise to lambda 1 minus 1 e raise to lambda 2 x minus mu square. Now, alpha 1 log 2 up divided by this quantity uh, I am going to change it as lambda 1 correct and this quantity will become lambda 2. These are again a different constants correct related to alpha 1 and alpha 2 respectively. Okay. And now, we will use this. So, this is the expression I get for my f x correct and then this expression has to satisfy the constraints correct. So, the first constraint we have is basically is this constraint. So, if you plug in that f x here, this will imply that this should be equal to 1. So, this implies that e raise to lambda 1 minus 1. is equal to 1. Okay. Now, 
this is equal implies that e raised to lambda 1 minus 1. Uh, this integral is standard and you will get it equal to pi by minus lambda 2 this is equal to 1 for lambda 2 less than 0 correct this has to be satisfied okay so straightforward basically and from here i say that this implies that e raised to lambda 1 minus 1 is equal to minus lambda 2 by pi okay and now let's use the constraint second constraint which says that PDF should be equal to sigma squared. So, this will imply right, substitute the effects which we got just now. So, this will be equal to minus this is for e raised to lambda minus 1 from this here correct. Then I write it e raised to lambda 2 x minus mu squared dx is equal to sigma squared. Okay. Now, what you could do is basically here we could change the variables here x minus mu equal to z and then solve it this is standard again. So, if you basically if you look at this the solution to this is very simple. So, this implies this uh, you can even this basically corresponds to something like a normal distribution where you have a mean equal to mu and if you choose lambda 2 which satisfies this then that the above equation will be also true. So, it is very simple to see that this should be satisfied from here correct this condition should be satisfied. So, this implies that lambda 2 is equal to 1 ma is equal to minus 1 by 2 sigma squared correct. So, from this we get therefore, e raised to lambda 1 minus 1 is equal to square root of 1 by 2 pi sigma squared. So, what I get is my f x is equal to 1 by root 2 pi sigma squared e raised to minus x minus mu squared upon 2 sigma squared. So, this is the final relationship which I get and this is not difficult for you to identify as a normal or Gaussian PDF. So, this PDF will maximize my differential entropy H x given that the variance of my random variable is fixed to sigma squared. Okay. So, we will continue this discussion in the next class. We will try to find out what is the differential entropy for this normal or Gaussian PDF. Thank you.